In this video, we'll be taking a look at two topics, which are when to use solid mesh in SOLIDWORKS Plastics, and also how to specify different domains using Plastics Professional for things like insert overmolding and representing the runner system. If this is your first look at Plastics, there is a more beginner-friendly tutorial that we'll link in the description below. Let's take a quick look at a comparison between the solid and shell or surface mesh. At a glance, they don't look any different, except that the solid mesh actually contains mesh elements through the thickness of the material, whereas the shell mesh will have to interpolate through the thickness. This means that for parts with thick and thin regions, the solid mesh is definitely what you want to use, and the help file has a good document that shows different use cases of when each would be appropriate. The solid mesh is available in plastic standard, so let's take a look at how to set it up on a single cavity example here. I would create a new study and just choose solid as my analysis procedure. Creating a solid mesh is actually a two-step process, where first we create the surface mesh on the exterior, and then we perform a solid mesh transformation that will fill in the interior with elements. We'll specify the refinement method and level that we want. Click Create. Once the surface mesh is prepared, I have an indicator of my element count up top, but I still have another step to do, which is to click this next arrow. And this is where I'll perform the solid mesh transformation that will allow me to click create and actually fill the volume of the part with these solid elements. So we have controls during the solid mesh creation for the number of boundary layer elements, which are these extruded prisms right here. And then the rest is infilled in with these tetrahedrals. This will also give us additional results, plots, and types of outputs that we'll be able to post-process once the analysis is done. This solid mesh transformation is probably the screen where you would encounter errors if there was any issues with the geometry, such as faulty faces or just too large of an element size. So if you encounter a problem here, even though it's unlikely, uh, the thing to do would probably be to click the back arrow and make adjustments to the surface mesh or exit out altogether and repair the faulty geometry. And then try recreating the solid mesh again. From there on out, it's really the same process of setting up a plastic study. Also note that when using the solid mesh, if you're specifying the injection location, you'll have the ability to set either a gate size when using a vertex or sketch point based location or to specify a face for the gate location, such as using a split line command in SOLIDWORKS to represent the actual area and shape of the gate. This allows you to get a little more realism. Here I've got a configuration with a metal insert that I want to mold this over, as well as a runner that's modeled, a sprue and runner. So when I go to create my study here, I'll use the solid mesh. And you'll see I have multiple domains. So we'll end up specifying the part body or cavity itself as the cavity, the runner as a runner, and then the insert as an insert definition. It could be a metal or a polymer. And again, this capability to utilize multiple domains is part of the Plastics Professional and higher simulation packages. So I'm going to set this to a metal insert and specify the type of steel that I'm using. I'll also have the capability to set insert properties such as its initial temperature. Then the setup is the same as our previous plastic setup where I can specify my polymer and when I go to place my injection location I'm going to place it at the top of the sprue or runner system. Again using the solid mesh will allow me to specify a face rather than a sketch point or vertex. 
Next, we'll begin creating our mesh. I'm going to use curvature based, and it would be a good idea to place a mesh refinement in the form of mesh control on the faces of the runner. So I'm going to select all these faces, and then I'll select them from my mesh control screen here and enter my desired mesh size, which I'll use 0.5 millimeters, and then click Create. So I actually ended up adjusting that down to 0.2 millimeters on the gate. Once our surface mesh is created, we'll click the next arrow to move on to the solid mesh transformation. And we can use these section clipping settings to adjust where we're slicing. I want to actually slice through the Z direction. So I'm going to move this here. And I can also use the arrow keys on my keyboard to get a little more precision here. So you can see how we're meshing also the inside of the insert, which is just a solid material. And then we're actually meshing through the gate area. Finally, we'll go ahead and run the fill analysis. Once the analysis is complete, we'll have our results files, which we can interpret the same as we do in any other study. But using the solid mesh, we'll have an additional option for doing an isosurface or a clipping plane. So the isosurface is useful so that we can actually see the three-dimensional flow of polymer within the cavity. If we slow down the play rate here, you'll actually be able to see how the polymer transitions between thin and thick regions. This is data that just isn't there using the shell or surface mesh. Similarly, we'll be able to do cut plots for things like temperature. Let's look at temperature at end of fill. And we'll uncheck isosurface mode and check a clipping plane mode. Then select our front plane as our clipping plane. We can then probe temperatures through the part. As we're viewing results or working with the analysis, we also have the ability to toggle visibility of different categories of domains, such as runner visibility, or we can show or hide things like the insert. So to summarize, we showed the setup differences of solid and shell mesh. When you might want to use solid mesh, which is anytime you have thick areas of the part, or many perforated areas or holes inside the part cavity, or anytime you need a special feature such as insert overmolding. We also showed how you can, in Plastics Professional, define different domains, as in this case, runner, cavity, and insert, and run an insert overmolding analysis, and then some of the additional results plots that we get access to when using solid mesh. Hopefully you found this video helpful and let us know in the comments what type of content you'd like to see next.